Chapter twenty nine of Iracema, the Honey Lips, a Legend of Brazil by José de Alencar, translated by Isabel Burton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter twenty nine. Pochi returned from the bath. He follows the trail of Quatiabo in the sand and ascends the height of Jacarecanga. Here he finds the warrior on the summit, standing upright with his eyes straining and his arms stretched towards the broad seas. The Pichiguara follows his gaze and discovers a large igara ploughing the green waters and driven on by the wind. It is the great igara of my brother's nation sent to seek him. The Christian sighed. They are the white warriors, enemies of his race, who seek, for a war of vengeance, the shores of the brave Pichiguara nation. They were routed with the Tabajaras on the banks of the Camusim. Now they come with their friends, the Tupinambash, by the way of the sea. My brother is a great chief. What thinks he that his brother Pochi should do? Summon the hunters of the Soipé and the fishers of the Trairi. We will hasten to encounter them. Pochi awoke the voice of the Inubia, and the two warriors set out for Mokoribi. Soon they saw, hastening from all parts, the braves of Jaguarassu and Camoropim to respond to the war cry. The brother of Jacauna warned them of the enemy's approach. The great Maracatim flew upon the waters along the coast, which extends as far as the margins of the Parnaíba. The moon began to increase. When the ship left the waters of the Mearim, contrary winds drove it into the high seas, far beyond its destination. The Pichiguara warriors, in order not to startle the enemy, hide themselves among the cajueiros and follow the great Igara along the shore. During the day, the white sails are conspicuous, and by night the ship's lights pierce the sea's darkness like fireflies lost in the forest. Many suns they march thus. They pass beyond the Camusi, and at last they tread the beautiful shores of the Bay of Parrots. Pochi sends a warrior to the great Jacauna and prepares for the combat. Martin, who had mounted the hill of sand, knew that the Maracatin would seek shelter under the lee of the land, and warns his brother. The sun was already rising. The Guaraciaba warriors and their friends, the Tupinambash, run along the waves in light pirogas to make the shore. They form a great arc, like a shoal of fish crossing the current of a river. In the middle are the fire warriors, who carry the lightning. On each wing, the warriors of Mearim, who brandish the tomahawk. But no nation ever drew the bow so unerringly as the great Pichiguaras, and Pochi was the greatest chief of all the chiefs who carried the Nubia of war. At his side marches his brother, as great a chief as himself, and learned in the stratagems of the white race, with hair like the sun. During the night, the Pichiguaras had, by his directions, fixed into the beach a strong caissara, or stockade of thorns, and had raised against it a wall of sand, where the lightning might cool and extinguish itself. Here they await the foe. Martin orders other warriors to man the tops of the highest palms, and there, screened by the broad fronds, to make ready for the moment of attack. The arrow of Pochi was the first which left the beach, and the Guaraciaba chief was the first hero that bit the dust upon the strange soil. The thunders roar from the right of the white warriors, but the bolts only burrow themselves in the sand or dive into the sea. The Pichiguara arrows now fall from the heavens, then they fly from the earth and bury themselves in the enemy's hearts. Each warrior falls, riddled with many arrows, like the prey for which the piranhas fight in the waters of the lake. The enemy once more embark in the canoes and return to the Maracatin to fetch bigger and heavier thunders which neither one man nor two could manage. 
when they were returning, the chief of the fishers, who swims in the sea waters like the agile Camoropin, from whom he took his name, casts himself into the waves and dives. Before the foam had passed away from the place where he disappeared, the enemy's canoe had sunk, as if it had been swallowed by a whale. The night came, and brought with it repose. At dawn of day, the maracatin was flying in the horizon, towards the banks of the Mearim. Jacauna arrived, not in time for the fight, but for the feast of victory. At the same hour that the songs of the Pichiguara warriors were celebrating the conquest of the Guaraciabas, the first son born to this land of liberty, begotten by the blood of the white race, saw the light in the plains of Porangaba. End of chapter 29